2016 at World Ultimate Guts Championship. So yeah, they're focusing on their um, men's side a little more this cycle. And therefore they're still finding connections, kind of trying out different styles. And that's why yesterday they didn't, didn't have that, ma that great of a game, but they're coming together. And I believe Czech Republic are one of the teams competing for a World Ultimate Guts Championships bid. A, f a few teams in the men's division having to battle out almost like a qualifier event. They didn't know going into the tournament that that was the case. Exactly. I think they found out um, Sunday in the morning that they're going to compete. There's five countries competing for three spots, and I believe Israel is one of them, as well as the Nether Netherlands and Czech Republic, and I believe Poland as well. So, yeah, let's see how this works out. Yeah, so... Great pulls there. Got to check. Yeah, second great pull that Israel have had to work it out from their end zone, and that was almost intercepted. You can see one or two of the handler marks kind of sagging in the lane for the Czech Republic, and there's a drop from Israel. Short field opportunity for Czech there. And there's a shot for the goal. That's a break for the Czech Republic. Going downwind. Great patience there. Team. Dubiek. Yeah, I like that uh, defensive look there from the Czech Republic. You see the handle marks are kind of sagging in the lane, yeah. putting pressure on each throw downfield, making very tight windows. And I think that maybe put off the Israeli receiver. So I think the pull had a lot to do with it. Great pull can, can help you very lot with those um, defense, defenses, especially in the, in the windy game. If you can contain them in their own, push them in their own end zone in the start, they'll have a, a hard time getting out of there. So looking at the club scene in the men's division in the Czech Republic, I know you got big teams like Fui, Yellow Block. What's your not your knowledge of them or even 3SB? So yeah, I think uh, 3SB is mainly a mixed team that comes together to play open for um, the national championships and also EUCR. And Fui is a powerhouse from that region. I think they've, they're always doing great at EUCR and then going to EUCF a couple of times. Um, and I think they're, m they're merging with um, Yellow Fever, so making Yellow Fui out of it to um, compete with their best players and try to a good region going. I've heard that a lot of their, um, the Czech players are living in Prague um, and are playing on this team together, training frequently. So, yeah. A lot of connection in between clubs there on the Czech side. But, uh, zone look here from the Czechs. Kind of a 3 3 1, rather passive. Some might call it, looks a little bit like an arrowhead. But Israel doing well up until that moment where a backhand goes awry. Now looking to get another break, thinking about the deep shot. Israel scampering. Now, just outside on end zone, a long way to go. Wind definitely going from right to left, so this is it's going to be a little harder to try and score an upwind break. Oh, this goes up in the air. Three Israeli players there to sweep it up. Just back with Vadim. Oh, now a deep shot. That one may go too far with the wind. Another turnover for the Israelis. They, as you said, had a very tight game with the Aus uh, Austria. Austria yeah. Did you get to see any of that game? Um, I did actually see some of it. I think it was it was the first game of the tournament, and both teams were trying to find connections. And Israel had a lot of great shots and amazing catches and layouts. So I think they just came out and had their their connections right on top. And Austria struggled with that and was a little intimidated by their strength in terms of deep game and and uncharacteristic fr throws on that end. Martin Plack picking up the disc, being forced forehand. 
by Israel and tries to break the mark but can't, giving Israel a very short field. Trying to get that break back. Simo, one of the founders of the club team New Age, shoots the end zone. That's a great goal with the head spike there. Cheshik. The, the Czech player there just maybe slipping on that turf, turf ground, making it easy for the Israels to get in that break. So break back and we're back on serve, I believe. What's your feeling on playing on turf fields compared to grass? I actually prefer turf fields, but but um, in this heat, I think grass fields are easier to to play on for the. So why, why in general do you think you'd prefer turf fields? Mm, I don't know, I like laying out on turf fields for way better. Okay. Because, I don't know, you can slide a lot longer. But, and then I don't, I have a, a hard time on grass because um, my back just doesn't really. Okay, you know, okay, like I'm, feeling much, yeah, <laughs> I'm feeling you, I'm feeling you. I, 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 I know, do like turf fields in the rain. Yeah, turf fields in the rain are great. Yeah, because then but you slide. I think quite now this, very hot rubber chrome might not be so ideal to lay out on, especially if you don't have any any kind of under armor or protection. Might get a, a little bit of a burn off it, but both these teams throwing themselves around as the score is 2-2, two -two, but Czechs having a break. And they will be on offense going downwind now. Looks like Israel have a zone of their own. Being very loose on the handlers. And Czechs wasting no time with the big swings. I've worked it up to half field. Just the three handlers. Fanschel. Serb. And now they get it downfield. Just Rilo sitting in. The axis handler position, keeping the disc moving. So, lefty player switches into the scuba grip briefly. I mean, no pressure on the swings pretty much whatsoever from the Israeli side. Allowing the Czech Republic to make a lot of passes. I'm glad that nobody's having to stat keep this pass count because they're getting to stall one, if even, before that disc is gone. Yeah, they're doing a great job of containing that zone. Now Just they're getting a few yards. Zone. Fakes the overheads. And Israel stick with their zone. Oh, that was almost a block. Thought he was going to get there. Really close bit there. And now, parked outside ends, and that's a goal for the Czech Republic. They had one good opportunity to get the disc off them. Other than that, it was very simple passes from the Czechs. Right, Israel are trying the same zone. Or very similar zone to the Czech Republic. And Czechs just being a little more patient, working on their handler set, just connecting on with their downfield cutters a little better. I think for the most part, in in zone defense, you kind of have two types of zones. One, it's passive, which I think we saw there, or you have an aggressive zone where you might have a, a four-person cup and you're really you forcing a difficult very throw. Close defensive bid there. Amazing play by number 16. Simo. Simo, yeah. One of the players to watch on the Israeli side. Yeah, I think sometimes they're getting maybe a little too confident checks with those swings, and he kind of came out and attacked for the first time, but otherwise being very passive just trying to force the other team to make a lot of throws, which uh, didn't work out that time. It was pretty close to getting into defensive play. I like to see teams mix it up as well, then maybe come out with a more aggressive zone, like that three, four person cup, or force players to make very difficult throws, or throw, throw overheads or throw over the zone rather than just keep swinging over back around it. Right, I think in that wind, it can be a great weapon to have a good aggressive zone. And 
You see a zone from the Czechs as well. This is a little different. I think they might have transitioned now. Oh, there's a deep shot. A lofty, feathery flick to the end zone, and it's a great goal for Itai Simo. Yeah, great vision there by the fellow with the knee and, knee and socks. So the club team New Age was started to be the new age of Israeli Ultimate, um, just based outside Tel Aviv. The other kind of big club in that region would be Element. But now there's a newer New Age, Tiger. And I think uh, the New Age, some of the New Age players are, are coaching on that team, right? So they're trying to develop their own New Age. All right, timeout call by the Israelis, I believe. Yeah, so timeout by the Israelis. Score is 3-3. Three, three. Uh, just one break so far for the Czechs. Have you had a chance to see any other exciting games in this men's division? Um, I saw... Well, I saw... Austria a lot, obviously, because <laughs> I know a lot of the, a lot of the players, um, and they're playing GB right now, so this might be a great game for first place. Also, the Israeli Austria game was pretty intense, and I think yesterday Russia took on um, Italy um, to win, and I couldn't see that much of it because I'm also um, working as an Altwood reporter for the women's division, so I focus on that a little more. But uh, apparently that was a really great game. Russia looking very good on that. Have you had a chance to see the Czech women's team at all? Yeah, they're amazing. They're doing a great job. They're, they've won against France on Universe and f at the first day it was very, rather unexpected, but now they've had a great game against Russia yesterday, um, going down only 15-10 um, with having a great first half of trading. And if Traded um, until halftime with Italy yesterday as well, so they're they're looking at great composure. Just couldn't, can't keep it, can't keep their energy up till the very end of the game. But I think during this tournament they will manage to keep their chills. And I think yeah, they they're on the run for quarters, which is really great. Yeah, shout out to Rachel Toshnarova and Sarah Toshnarova as well. I was just shout out for Rachel <laughs> for sending me an audio of the Ukrainian, uh, the Ukrainian, the Czech Republic. Uh, names, pronunciations this morning. Unfortunately, didn't get a lot of time to listen to it, but it was mesmerizing having her voice in my ear. Would love to get her on the stream at some stage. I know she's a busy woman with that exceptional Czech women's team. Coaching it, actually. I think she's a D-line captain and doing a lot of that. Yeah, and I believe her sister Sarah is playing O-line. Yes. I asked them which one's doing better, and she wouldn't tell me, which makes me think it was probably Sarah playing better. <laughs> Sarah will be competing on the Eurostars yeah, tour. I'm really excited for her. She actually plays with my um, club team right now. She lives in Vienna, studies there, plays for box. So yeah, it's great, great working with, with working with her and handler set. Another. You see a great deep shot there. And it's the big man underneath it with a huge overhead sky. That was mighty impressive. Mark Dostal, take a bow. He just went up and over the Israeli player there. Great work from the Czech there after the timeout. Looking very composed and very slick. Yeah, you can tell they just like to lob some up to old yeah. Mark Dostal. We saw the hammer put up to him earlier. Probably not a bad idea. I'm going to no. guess he's the tallest man probably on the field. Probably. Das Dahl, the 26-year-old, has been playing for 12 years. Oh, wow. It's pretty impressive. Very impressive. 12 years is time. A lot of veterans on the team, I believe. Yeah, good spread in the age bracket. I believe the oldest man is Peter Hedding, who is 41. Wow. According to Marasta Sheet. Playing for 16 years, only four more years than 
Dostal. Lamka with the pull. This one about a meter past the brick mark. And Israel trying to get that smooth, silky offense back. The tireless cutting of Katsir. It's had a lot of touches so far. And that is a jump into the end zone. Looked a little bit suspect. Israeli players calling calling a goal there. Hard to tell. It wasn't a massive leap, so it's hard to tell maybe when he was uh, in the air. The disc is back in. And a little pop pass to the front corner. Israeli. Just works so well in tight spaces at times. Right. And it's not that they're particularly small, it just seems to be their style of play. It's very hard to stop him. So an offensive hold for them. No turnovers in that point. They need to get an upwind break though, if they want to get back on serve. I think that was... Um the purpose of the timeout to maybe get another defense on there and try to, try to put some more pressure on the Czech team. And saw that great hook. Israel normally working a great um, deep game as well. Haven't seen too, too much of that yet, but I guess maybe the wind is part of that decision not to to rely on their, their their deep threats that much. Omri Ben Zion with the goal. I believe he was feeling sick the last few days. I uh, heard an asthma attack, so wasn't sure if he's going to play today. But you can safely say he's on the field. Yeah, just got a nice goal for himself. Morning to anyone joining us from all over the world here on the European Ultimate Federation free stream brought to you by Ulti.tv and a throwaway from the Czech Republic Cohen with the disc. Libo, oh, that looks like a, a foul, yeah, uncontested. I could hear the hand slap from over here. Great spirit there. Just immediately, immediately uncontesting it. This will be checked back in. Libo. Gets a little high. His backhand off. Keeps the disc moving upfield. Working in this tight space now. Yuval Majid. Oh, and it's a shot. Oh, it does not come off. That would have been a big opportunity for the Israelis. Just a little too far out in front there. So Czech Repub Republic leaving that round break rather open. They're checking the disc right now because I th think he's maybe stepped on it. Yeah, not going to catch that one with your feet. Would be a good play though. Yeah, we saw something similar in women's college nationals. Right, I remember that. Dina Elamelek, which has now been called the mermaid catch, but this one Definitely deed with the hand. Great athletic play. Amazing bit there by the Israelian player. Just getting a hand on there. Yeah, David Novak, one of the top receivers for this Czech Republic team. I think he was trying to box out the Israeli player and did well to go up and over, not initiate any contact there. That was a great defensive play. A really amazing bit there as the Israelis get another chance on their upwind break. There we see the inside shot. Evil. 
Cross field from the left hand player, Kadeem. Oh, and it just vagrant disc can't be caught. He's lost his hat and the disc. But now, Czech will pick up again. Just past the halfway mark. Shoot. Downfield to Novak. Wearing the backwards cap. A few of these Czech Republic players wearing the backwards hat. I think that went out of style about 2007, but not in the Czech Republic. No, they're a little late with that, maybe. And better offense now from the Czechs. Looking to pop it in. That's a great goal in the front corner. Yeah, just Pavel Pelikan swooping down and getting that goal. Yeah, great defense, but the Czechs always getting it back and not giving up on their their hold so yeah that might come back to bite them the Israelis had a chance to break up wind one or two yards to go and just a miscue in the end zone the Czech are able to come back down and pop in their old point they're not going to get many great opportunities like that to break up wind probably not let's see how this works out shout out to all the volunteers and scorekeepers helping out at the tournament here they're doing a great job in the heat. I'm here with two of the world's finest scorekeepers and volunteers, Fabricio and V. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to uh, Ulti.tv crew doing a fantastic job here in the field two, aka Mordor, baking in this Hot, rubbery pebble. Leon Grant and Christina Obermeyer enjoying this early morning game. And uh, yeah, Czech Republic in the lead. Thanks to that early break. <laughs> we see this zone look again from the Czechs. Israel, Israel wastes no time marching down the field. And a quick pop into the end zone, as smooth as you like. Yeah. Very little resistance from that zone defense there. Israel is doing a great work there, finding the holes and popping it through. Just a lot of quick, quick touches and always getting some yards with it. And maybe the Czech will have to adapt to their their play because that zone, if it's you um, meant to contain contain their offense, it doesn't really work that well. So you might want to put on that aggressive four-person cup we were talking about earlier. But still, now it's Israel's time to get a break. Maybe force the Czech to another risky throw. Yeah, they just moved it just so fast, the Israelis. Uh, the zone just couldn't keep up them, couldn't put a lot of pressure. And that's what you want to see at times, though, is pressure, uh, which you'll get from a, a different kind of zone look, maybe, perhaps. Both of them kind of playing a very relaxed zone, particularly around the handlers, giving them a lot of space, trying to contain downfield, but not really working, I think, for either team. Right, also maybe because they, they know how to work through it. You practice against each other, you know, learn to play against the style of defense your other line does. So maybe just working O against Thielen, you already know how to get through an arrowhead zone like that easily. So I've got to play against Yellow Block and Fui in the past. I think I remember my club being Pels, we got a universe point win against Fui in the quarterfinals of the windmill. But the Czechs getting it back inside the national team. Played Yellow Block at a UCF. And they hammered us, like 15-6. Oh, really? Yeah. That's good. We had just lost narrowly to Bologna as the day. Now we see a deep shot straight away. This is the Czech Republic offense that we know and love, but it's Deed. Yuval Majid, what a great play. That was a great bit there. Perfect read on the disc, just a little. Yeah, the Israeli boys have some hops. 
That's once or twice now. I, I didn't think they were going to get it. Right. I was preparing to call for the check goal, and they deny me that opportunity. But uh, they've struggled their D-line offense going upwind. D-line offense have struggled the entire game. They've yet to get a break. Now a big crossfield pass in there. This one's going to be a Callahan. Just as I say it. Svatos. Yuri Svatos with the Callahan again. Israel, the defense is so good, but their offense is not clicking and just handing a goal straight to the Czechs. They won't want to watch that one again, but Yuri will. Just in the right place at the right time. Yeah, the, the Israels just seem to not connect in their easy throws. Just to clean that up, the wind's tough, but hasn't changed a lot since the beginning of the game, so I think maybe it would be time to accommodate to it. And I think the Israeli team, I don't have my stat sheet here, have had more break opportunities, but haven't converted any. And I think the Czech Republic have maybe had two or three all game, and that early one being what's separating them as Z coach um, for Israel. Said he used to coach new age but now has four kids I believe yeah that's what he said he doesn't have time for trainings two or three times a week so it's very stopped but I think he's still going strong on the coaching side there for the national team maybe he has some veteran idea on how to get another break on This one, a uh, lofty pull, which is going to fade back. So, not a lot of yards gained on that pull, leaving Israel with a short field. And they get the first pass off. Okay, Heine Stalkhound looking for the reset, eventually gets it off. Looking for that continuation cut, and it's not going to work out. A little too far in front there for Katia. Couldn't quite catch up with it. So check with the, with their own opportunity to break upwind. And they're gonna take the big deep shot from left-handed player, and the Israelis are under it. And sweep that one up. Oh, and a drop. Ozri. There. And the Czechs Another lash out. it again. Didn't work the first time. Oh, and it will work the second. Has a look around, calls a timeout. Czechs feeling pumped up now. Yeah, great garbage catch there. By number 14. Fabric. Fabric. The The Israeli player actually had the better position. But the Czech player just took the opportunity and called the timeout, just to be sure. What do you think about those time timeout calls right in front of the end zone? Generally, I'm against them. I think he looked uh, around his teammates, and they were set up in a, a very bad position, I thought. It was one or two players in the end zone cutting each other off. Everyone was trying to filter back. So in that sense, maybe not a bad call. Let's I see what they can make out of it. Interesting to see how the Czechs will come up on defense. I think the last few times we've seen something like this happen, that the, the teams will often come out in a clam or some kind of zony poachy look to stop any set play in the end zone. We see the Israelis just the seven are on the line are huddling up, having a chat with their coach. The rest of the team are just getting pumped up, singing some songs. Great to, to keep their own team teams spirit up like that. Show, show them how they're supported by their sideline. Call from our 
scorekeepers slash timekeepers saying there's 30 seconds left in this timeout. So the checks and offense have pretty much set up. Looks they're trying like they're trying to isolate one player in the front of the end zone. Yeah, let's see what the Israeli defense comes up with. Just to see if they put a poach in the lane. They have a little poach off the stack. You can see three players back for the Czech Republic. One isolated in the front of the end zone and three in the vertical sack in the back. And you can see the Israelis have poached off the three in the back, kind of making a little triangle around them. And it is Simu who's trying to mark the ISO. Does well to shut down that first cut. I think it's so strange. Pretty much every time people call a timeout outside the end zone, they set up an ISO or a play, but the defense never, ever plays honestly, so that ISO becomes pretty irrelevant very fast. I think teams need to be a little more clever in how they come up with that and maybe don't really have a particular set play. Let, let the offense do what's given to them. All right, I agree, I agree with you on that. Having to reset. Nice round break from the checks. Thanks for the shot to the end zone. Back of Martin, Lippert, and a shot, and that is another break for the checks. Brilliant goal, Babaric in the front corner of the end zone. So the set play didn't work, but they kept possession well. Yeah, great work there, but any check handlers just running, grinding to get their break, break close. I think the Israelis leaving open that round break quite a lot. We've seen that before, the checks are using whatever they're given by, their, by, by the defense very, very well. Connecting on a lot of those around shots. Another timeout by the Israels. Yeah, second timeout call for the Israeli team. Czech Republic have the opportunity to break going down when to take half. They'll be coming out in offense. It's often you see um, a second break after just getting an upwind break. So, and the Israelis haven't had the best their the best time working up the wind. So let's see what their O line can do. And hopefully not get broken for half too, because eight five for half would be really different. Would and would be the checks coming out on offense. So they really want to score this offense upwind. If not, trying to get another break after that. But yeah, they really, really don't want to end up 8-5 down with the checks coming out on offense. So I think this time I called probably more just to even give their O-line a little bit of a break before this pivotal point of the match. So this Israeli team is actually fighting for one of those um, world spots, but their coach is not sure even if they were, are going to go there. They want to send in a bid for worlds. So let's see, maybe they'll win this game and get a good of an opportunity that they'll um, actually really want to go to worlds. Get take their bid. I'd love to have a coverage of an Israeli side there. Yeah. A lot of teams expressing their interest actually from that region of the world. I know Iran and Afghanistan have declared an interest. Right, I've heard of that. It'd be great to just really cover all the world. Yeah. Next time. The more nations, the merrier. So timeout is over. <coughs> Let's see what the checks can muster up from their D-line. Will be Halamka to take the pull for checks. Their pull's been on point so far Different in this three. first half, yeah. Very putting a lot of pressure on the Israelio early on. Come on, come on, come on. 
Looking at some of the results also taking place this morning. In the mixed division, we have Italy mixed leading, Belgium mixed 5-3, Great Britain mixed beating Hung Hungary mixed 10-0 currently. Germany mixed up 7-1 against the Danish side that beat Russia in a controversial game yesterday. Oh, that's an interesting result. Yeah, the Germans will be happy with that. I'm actually staying on the same floor of them in the university accommodation. Oh, a little bit of a bump there. Yeah, I think it was just trying to follow the handler coming through the pop pass, an unfortunate bump. Nothing ill intended, but working well upwind here, Israel. Tight window for the up the line shot, and it was not on. And swept up there by Brock. Brock, who had a good performance at Windmill in Amsterdam, where they got a bronze medal. This Czech Republic side. I believe have made it to the final of Windmill in the past as well, picking up a silver medal. Now a high arcing swing and it's an incredible sky. Great defense there. Cheshik is having a sensational game in this first round of the day in the men's division. So, grinding up the field here again, Israel. Just two cutters downfield. That is a very low throw. That Hawk did not take the flight pat. He intended for it. The check again with a chance to break. They call a timeout, so both teams using both their timeouts this half. Gives me an opportunity to talk about some of the other games happening right now. France mixed up 8-2 against the Norwegians. Finland mixed beating Poland mixed 6-4. Tight game in between Belarus and the Czechs in the mixed division. 6-5 there. Belarus currently in the lead. The Italian men leading against Latvia 7-5. Ireland mixed trailing to Russia. They're in the lead 8-3 in the mixed division. Germany men up 11-1 against Slovakia men. I think that is covering all the games happening currently. We got an exciting schedule for you today. I believe coming up next on this field we have Ireland men versus Denmark men. Ooh, that that'll be a nail biter. Yeah, both teams undefeated so far. That's going to decide who tops their pool. Pretty sure I know whom are you, who, whom you're rooting for. Well, I'm wearing my Denmark jersey right now, yeah, so <laughs> my Schwer Stutz jersey. I traded with them back in 2015 when I was supposed to be playing on the Ireland men's team but I didn't because my foot was broken but I was commentating and it was great and Schwer knee deep in controversy has to be said after yesterday's uh, mixed matchup Denmark taking on Russia a spare timeout was called and then and the sprinklers went on <laughs> yeah the cool the side down I have to say, it's surprised to see Schwer Stutz involved in that. A very passionate man, but usually a very spirited player. But I think it was more his reaction that got him in trouble. But I think deserved winners in that game, Denmark, no doubt about it. Won, I think, by 14-9 or 14-10. Maybe 14-10 was the final I score. Think, I think 14-10 was, but you know, Russia just couldn't connect on that. Weren't happy with their performance, and Denmark just took their opportunity and probably Russia wasn't happy with th with the outcome of the game and that forced them to be a little more intense spirit wise or maybe trying to get everything giving a little too much maybe yeah but that group could end up in a three-way tie as we saw Germany currently leading against Denmark 7-1 right so that would be interesting to watch yeah see how that one plays out as the deep shot comes now to Novak, who shows incredible speed and a sensational layout flying across the field. Oh my word, Quick David Novak. And that is a break for half from the Czech Republic. He's coming off that timeout, waste no time. Two tickets to Boomtown as David Novak gets horizontal. 
a feeling we might see that one again. Yeah, I hope so too. Novak has a little look at his elbows. His burning pace only matched with the burning hot turf here. I didn't think he was going to get there, and just at the last second, reminds me of the Josh Zipperstein play that happened in Prague uh, a little while ago. I think it was World Ultimate Club Championships, then it was for Sakai in Prague, but the man from Prague himself, well able to do it, showing his pace. Great separation from the two Israeli defenders, can't get there. Sends the rubber come flying. And a great dish off there. Here they go. Yeah, he'll pick up the assist. I believe David Novak was injured or not playing at the windmill tournament. No, I think so. They still managed third place, but it's good to have him for such amazing bids. Yeah, what a way to end this first half in this nail biting game in the men's division. Israel trailing to the Czech Republics as they take half 8 5. We're going to take a wheel siesta now during this halftime. Liam Grant for Christina Obermeyer. We'll be back in just a moment.
Welcome back, folks, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We're in the second half now, about to kick off in the men's division. Czech Republic in the lead against the Israelis, up 8 5. 56 minutes gone on the game clock. We've heard from our scoreboarders that halftime is over, so this game should be kicking off shortly. Liam Grant alongside Christina Obermeyer. Christina, any players impressed you in particular in this first half or any big moments for you? Yeah, I think Novak is doing a great job for this Czech side. Um, having this great bid for the halftime assist. And from the Israel side, um, Kat's here at number 95 um, with that, those great yellow tights. He's, I think he's been a, a great power, power for the, for the Israeli side on, on the cutting end. I right, so. you are, Christina, as we see them. Czechs now coming out on offense with a chance to extend their lead to four. Going upwind now, though. Now on the near sideline, the checks. Low pass, well collected by Pelican. Quick fall on the mark there. Uncontested. If you're watching on the YouTube live stream, let us know in the live chat. I can give you a shout out. And a turnover and a chance for Israel to get one back going downwind. Yeah, just couldn't quite connect on that. On that. Reset pass there. Great inside shot though. From the Czech player. Debo picking up the disc, having to deal with the exceptional mark of Dostal. Goes for the swing to Cohen. Looking for Cohen again. Czech doing well to contain downfield. Again, this Israeli side have yet to muster up a break in this game and again they really struggle with their D-line offense. Midlow. To Dostal. It's nice. Low pass up the field. Something the Czechs have been doing very well is keeping those throws quite low when they're throwing up into the wind. So they're using this backhand instead of a sidearm for the open side a lot. Have that look. Yeah, the old granddad backhand, but is Israel now the chance to a break going downwind just past the opposition brick mark? Th they got to score these opportunities now. They this should, is yeah. That's a great, great opportunity for them. Setting up in a 3 4 horizontal stack. Nice first cut. Again, cutting quite laterally, this is Israeli side. And there's a shot to the front of the end zone. That is a goal. Great breaks there by the Israeli team. Jeshik making that first initial cut to start things off for Israel. And yeah, that's the first break of the game. Bringing it back to 8-6. See, that's how pretty much Israel initiate their offense all the time. It's one lateral cut, cut across either to the open side or break side. But you see a lot of maybe North American teams, some European teams, they tend to cut to and away from the disc. Either the end zone is straight under. Well, this Israeli side really like those horizontal cuts. And they're using their, their fakes really well and trying to attack the break side a lot. So let's see if they can, if they can score another break. Maybe getting a bit of a momentum there. Coach Noam Frisbell there. Having a look at his playbook, see what they can do to try and stop this Czech side scoring. The roll point downwind. Smile on his face now. 
content that this team have gotten a break. Bit of a roly pull this time. Gonna make it just up to the break mark. And looking like a match defense from the Israelis being very, very aggressive on the mark. Allows for the easy throw to the break side downfield. That bid was never gonna get there. Novak. Oh, gets shut down now. Re great recovery. Cheshik has been yeah, sensational great. all game long. Great switching defense there. Great aware awareness just to help out that bidding player. I, I, I'd have to say that I think the Israeli defense is actually better than the Czech's defense. Yeah. But when they pick up the disc, they just don't have the same confidence or prowess. As you see the up line go there, this could be contested. Dostal comes in and knocks it out of the air. Again, how many times have we seen that Israel go out and work really hard and get a great defensive play and then just turn it over in the first pass? Yeah. Just have to clean that up a little. Uh, maybe I see him maybe just hawking it to the end zone. If you're going to turn over first pass, might as well try and throw to the end zone. But it's going to be hard with the legs of Novak and Benchel. I just tell as well. It's going to be hard to, to hug it and actually get a pass off. Schladek. Oh, that is a high arching swing. The deep shot is on now. This one could be perfect. It's going to be low. He's going to have to lay out a fantastic wow. play. Amazing bid there. They're outside the end zone now. Can he get the goal for himself? Oh, it's fading. Can he switch? Oh, no. Just overthrown. Katsir doing a great job there, but couldn't connect on the second pass there for the goal. So Czech Republic will have another opportunity to work it down. Down the field. Katsir flying through the air. He thought he was maybe going to get this pop pass in. I like this idea of popping in and going straight away, but Neither the throw or the cut were really that on. Novak oh. tries a deep shot, gets blocked in the lane. Great heads of defense by the Asian team. That was Lebo just standing in the lane. He's going to call a timeout straight away. Let's see if it works for them. Israel looking, looking great after the half. Not giving up, trying to get those breaks back. There's a great, great bid. Great. Great defense by, by Lebo there. Yeah, Israel not getting any breaks in the first half of this game. Now they're turning up the heat. Israel also there with a rather small roster. It has to be said, it seems like pretty much every O D line you have the likes of of Simo having a standing game, Cheshik playing a lot. Katsu as well. Yeah, I heard they had a not so tight game against Great Britain. I think the Israelis actually kind of, dare I say, threw that game or at least didn't uh, run themselves into the ground. Often you'll see that going up against the former champions, number one seed. I'm sure if they met them in knockout play, then I'm sure they'd give them a game, but I understand they wanted to rest their legs for that one and maybe focus on this crunch game. This might, might be a good idea, really. Good coaching. Might be a game of closer game but you couldn't couldn't keep down a powerhouse like GB so yeah maybe try to win the games that you might actually win against Czech Republic you get third in the pool that's a great position to go into power pools yeah we're getting one shout out on the YouTube live streams from Noam looking for a shout out for farmers so thank you all farmers for uh, growing fruit for us I think there's a farm just a little over the fence there not sure what they're growing, almost just like corn. And what is quite a dry, arid climate during the summertime here in Hungary. In Gyr. That's my best. Yeah. Gyr. No, can't do it either. I give us a 7 out of 10, you know? We're, yeah, we're doing our best. Fine. 
Seven out of ten. Out of ten, ten is really fine. Lebo. Looking for the reset. Not really coming. Has to go backwards to Cohen. Now gets the leading pass to Lebo. This is a good position to attack that front corner. And now the shot's there, and that is a second break in a row for Israel. Cohen boosting up the line. Fair play to him. Yeah, great patience there by Israel after the timeout. Just isolating cutters, working from the handler space. Momentum swinging towards this Israeli side. So, score is 8-7, I believe. Yeah, the Czechs yet to score in this second half. And the Czechs have to go upwind now. So we might see another break opportunity for the Israel team. So if you were uh, the coach of the Israeli team during that halftime, what have you, would you have been saying to your squad? I would have encouraged them because I think they had some great opportunities, great plays, and they're, they're looking like a very um, good team. They just couldn't connect on, on one or two of those throws and having an arrow maybe um, rushing it a bit. Just keep, keep, keep to what you know, calm down a bit, and just play your game, and then it'll all work out and maybe try to to use the players that you know can can do a great play and motivate the teams that that's what we saw in the second half so i think yeah they did a great job of doing that pretty sure there was a, a great speech by the coach there yeah this is really side on a roll as you see one of the czech republic players using the foam rollers on the sidelines actually had a nice shot in between that point of one of the Hungarian churches in the distance. I actually think I saw a synagogue. Oh, and a great, great pool. In town. I think that is, there's two lines there. I think it's either out of bounds or maybe rolled out of bounds to be taken to the front of the end zone. Venchel. Again with the backwards cap. Gets a nice breakthrough off. Start this upwind offense. Want to stop the bleeding and prevent this Israeli team going on a three break run. The score is currently 8 7. Contrary to our scoreboard currently, as far as I'm aware, anyway. And now we see a deep shot. That one acting a little too much. Just a little too far out front. Check seemed to not get a, a lot of movement downfield, so swinging it between the handlers and then didn't see another opportunity but to to hack it out, which is probably a good, good position for the drills to work it down the downwind side of the field. Lebo, it's a cross field swing. Seem to have a little more space now, the Israeli side. Oh, and a great defensive play. I was just going to say, it looked like some of the offensive line had crossed over this D-line to try and stop the bleeding. It was Riedlow picking that pass off. Oh, and that was a dangerous cross field, floaty backhand. Again, always trying to work the break side, the checks. See the orange boots of Riedlow who Sends it across the field. Barbonic. Looking for the break side again. Having to go back. Martin. Lippert. Beautiful high release lefty backhand. What a great. End zone defense from the Israelis. Yeah, Israel, they don't give an easy chance of just as they score. 
Over There's there. a pick being called. Retracted. Looks like it was initially going to be retracted, and then I think the Czech player arguing against that. <laughs> Great display of spirit there. All right, so they'll send it back. So the Czech player talking his way out of that goal there. Didn't think he wanted it. I wasn't sure how where the pick exactly came from. Well, the Israel is doing a great job in containing the Czechs' red zone off offense there. So it's just been a little crowded. Yeah, we can see they're really trying to attack that break side. Looks like it might have been a foul on the mark. Uncontested. And a timeout called. You think they're going to try the same ISO again? I think maybe a hidden ISO would be the thing. I would, but yeah, let's see. You can really tell. I think they really they they need that hold right now, Czech Republic. So I think they'll do something amazing for sure. Maybe isolating one of their big guys to try and get a height mismatch there. Yeah, I like the idea of maybe setting up an ISO, but actually looking for someone in the stack who are being poached. But uh, yeah, you can see that they were struggling to, to score in that possession. Right. Israel really doing a great job in their, their defense, working hard and not giving them too many opportunities. Yeah, some good work there with the old tractor. Shout out to all the farmers here in Hungary. As we see one of the Irish boys pulling up his socks, getting ready for this big matchup. <laughs> that is handsome Niall, Niall McCarney, using one of his resistance bands. One of the best Irish dancers in Ireland. Is he? Yeah, clearly. This is uh, some traditional Irish dance going on right now. <laughs> Does he have two there? No. Double resistance band. Wow. Yeah, he is using two resistance bands. Is that even allowed? I think that's cheating. It is cheating. So we're seeing a split stack there. Two players in front, two in at the back from the Czech Republic. I like that retrofitted number there from uh, Majid. <laughs> yeah, some of the numbers on this Israeli side of the jerseys not aligning with a roster sheet. You see some of them actually have duct tape or whatever on the back of their shirts. I don't know if they're trying to throw us off here or anyone scouting them. Probably. Couldn't think of any other, other reason. Maybe they've lost their jersey or something. Well, I'm joining your little farming escapades during the timeouts though. As you now see Fabric. Another stoppage there. And the wind kind of coming from behind us now. That's why I think the Czechs have struggled to get it to this near sideline. This is the closest they've really been in this last session. Now a shot towards the break side just outside the end zone. Gets the continuation throw. That's a beautiful throw in motion. Yeah, great break on there. Martin Flash with a beautiful throw. And that is an offensive hold going upwind. They restore their two point lead. So the Israelis have to go up, upwind for another hold in their offense.
Yeah, we saw a great patience there from the Czech after the timeout. See that shot for goal, the round throw. Yeah, the wind does seem to be changing direction. Kind of coming a little bit cross field now. Definitely uh, going from right to left for the most part, but seems to be changing a little more crosswind as the day progresses. The sun is starting to swing around as well. Yeah, let's see how they can adapt. How this will influence the game. As the check side set to pull talking a little bit about fashion. I was mentioning that the trend towards shorter shorts has taken hold of a lot of Western Europe, but the Czech men definitely still sporting the long johns. I think it's more on the women's side, isn't it? I think it's Short happening on the men's side a bit. Definitely oh the GB men, a lot of them wearing shorter shorts. Oh well, the GB men. The Irish men, I think we'll see some shorter shorts in just a few minutes' time. The Irish lads sitting in the shade before their game against the Danes. And that is a high pull again. Probably one of the biggest differences between these two sides is the, the level of pulls have been outstanding from this Czech team. In fairness, it's for the most part, Israel have done well to work it up outside their end zone on the offense. And that is a high Callahan pass. Territory oh. and Tries to toe in for Callan. Nobody's quite sure. Patrick Novak, the 19-year-old, I think he's the youngest man on this squad. They're he gets the goal, he gets celebrated now. Two Callahans in one game. That's the polls, I tell you. Did a great job of shutting them down at the corner of the end zone there. And that's another break for the Czech Republic going up 10-7 now. You can see that replay. You see the wind has actually picked up significantly. That was a great up the line cut. And then great awareness by the, the marker actually. I, I would have to agree, it did look like he was inbound, so yeah, I think I that's think a fair call. I think they had a photographer on the sideline helping them out with solving it. Patrick Novak, you'll remember that one for a while. Big shout out to anyone in Prague, friends or family cheering the young man on. Now putting his nation in a better position, 10-7, restoring their three-point lead, which they carried into this second half. A shorter pull from the checks you can see the difference in pulling upwind and downwind to give you a fair idea of what the wind is like here in the moment in Hungary. Simo we're now in and now another turn from Israel. What was looking like a fantastic second half is now spiraling downwards for them. Czechs still have to work it upwind. Shot just doesn't connect there. And the Israels have another opportunity to get their offensive hold downwind. It's picking up quite a lot now. Can get harder. This one a low throw, gonna be difficult for it to stay in bounds, and it's just too far. I think going downwind, you just can't throw with that much zip and that low. It's just gonna always fly away from your receiver. You want to put a lot of touch, a lot of float on the disc. The checks can work it up, upwind again. Get another break on there on the board. So we're talking about that Germany mix, Denmark mix game right. is now 13-5 to the Germans. Okay, so they've. I okay. think that would mean that Germany will probably top the group on a three-way tie. Can't remember what the score was between Russia and Germany, but I think it was a plus two win for Russia, or maybe plus three. 
Yeah, so. Would you rather close the, if the German can contain the, the Danish? Ooh, unfortunate drop there by the Czech team. So Israel get a gift here. Short field to work with. Now the inside shot, a good little end zone offense play there. You can see they're always looking to isolate Kazir. He has incredible pace, great hands. Yeah, he's been a star in this Israeli side. Did a great, great job at moving around the, the defender to a position where he could, couldn't have an opportunity to get any, any chance on the disc. So yeah, good, good hold for, for the Israeli team. But I don't have it. Have to work hard to get another break opportunity there. See what the Czechs come up with now. So the Czech mixed team now up 10-9 against Belarus mixed. Ooh, that's a nail biter. Any Red Czech fans looking for updates on that? And the men's division as well. Italy men up 14-9 against Latvia. Italy kind of had a surprise loss yesterday against the Russians. Very good side, the Russians, but Italy have been very good. I know they're suffering a lot of injuries, a bit of frustration in the camp as well. I can imagine. Did uh, Russia and Latvia play yet? Do you know that? Uh, Russia and Latvia, I do not know. I presume they have, but I do. I'll see if I can find out the results for you. That might result in another tie, Latvia. So yeah, Latvia men lost 15-11, a 15-7 to the Russians. So right. I'd imagine that so it will be might, Germany might men who will top that group. Russia second, uh, Italy third, Latvia fourth. That's the way it's looking like now. Not set in stone, but a uh, sh short bladey pull from the Israelis. You can see both teams struggling to make it much further than the halfway line. round break potential now grinding up the field with Pelican thinks about the shot the end zone again around break this one's gonna float could go anywhere a lot of lads underneath it and a big collision in the air not sure if anything's gonna be called you're having a discussion about it yeah, no, I think it's pretty there. I think it was just a hospital pass. You have five or six people running into the same space. For me, I'd, I'd never call one of those fouls on offense if I feel the throw is really bad, which right. probably shouldn't impact the decision, but in a way, I think it does. So the Israels will work it up the wind? Looks like there is like an injury substitution. Yeah. I think it's... Libro coming off. Yuval Libro, who's had a great game and it's been a crucial part of this D line for the Israelis. They're going to struggle to work it up without him. Nice inside shot there, high in the stall count. See each throw, very difficult to execute going up in this wind. Thinks about the deep shot. Just working the others for now, getting some small yards. This better from Israeli D-line offense. No, now a vagrant shot could go anywhere on a great grab under pressure. Zion. Pick call downfield. They've done well to work it up from their own end zone past the halfway line. You can see a very compact horizontal stack. And now we see Deep Shot go up. Three Israeli players with separation. Will one of them gather it? No, they won't. They end up in a heap. I think too many cooks spoiled the broth there. 
great shot though, up the wind. Yeah, no, you have to take that shot. If you can get it off upwind to three open receivers, I wonder it would have been better off leaving it to the sliding player coming in behind him. Probably, but it's really hard to know whether there's someone behind you or not. Yeah, if I'm there, I'm going to try to catch it. If I can try to catch it, I'm going to yeah. give it a lash. Oh, good defensive pressure here from Israel. Keeping the checks outside around. Own ends for now. Deep shot is on. Thinks about it. Instead, works the under. Dostal. Shvatos. A low shot in the middle will give Israel another chance to try and get this open grind. It's like a lot of chaos there on the Czech side. They do love their timeouts, these teams. Definitely making the most out of them. Gives the time to uh, investigate the local agriculture of Hungary. Or Kier. 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 So how's your week been so far, Liam? It's been fine and dandy. I'm having a nice time. Doing three days, uh, three games a day on a commentary is probably the right amount, nice number. I've had some enjoyable games. As long as I can spend time in the shade. I'll see lots of teams bringing all sorts of shade structures to keep themselves out of the sun. Thankfully, we have a few little umbrellas here. The Irishmen there on the far sideline making use of the grandstand. Big crunch game coming up for them against Denmark, who were their host country four years ago. Yeah, the Irish women actually doing pretty good here. Yeah, I think the real competition for them is which of the two uh, divisions they're gonna finish higher in. Doesn't matter what medal you get, but as long as you finish higher than the, the women or the men or the opposite gender. What's your what's your pick? Who's gonna be higher? So technically in my in our picks contest I did pick the women to make the final and the men to make the semi final. Um, I feel the women's vision is a little more open. Right. In that sense I feel they they could finish probably have a lower floor and a higher ceiling in a in a way if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Probably a greater variation of where I think they could finish. Well, they are, I feel like uh, pretty confident in making the semi finals, but it's likely to be against the GB or Germany side, who I think are just a little bit a notch above everyone else in that men's division. I think in the women's division, it's probably only Germany that could maybe say they look a notch above, but I think the likes of Ireland could beat them. Finland have made some good statements in the competition. GB, uh, Russia women, there's a lot of, let's say, evenly matched teams in that women's division, so. Uh, according to my picks, anyway, I I have the women finishing higher, but it's the Irish men who are undefeated so far. Irish women losing on your point to Finland, and a violation as cutters start moving before the disc is checked in. So Israel now, another pick. Not a stoppage there. Yeah, have not been able to restart this game cleanly at all. So game is to 100 minutes. It's likely this one will reach time cap before either team gets to 15. Probably due to those excess amounts of time. As now we see the deep shot going up. Czech player able to shepherd that one. Stops the roll. Yeah, Israel just couldn't connect on that. I think they're kind of in a trouble position by now. 
Yeah, I, I kind of do like that deep shot if they have the players you're able to send. That was a difficult throw to execute, even the flick hook going up a win, but and usually they didn't have anyone really going deep with separation. And the style just in acres of space in the middle of the field. Israeli defense trying to recover. Yakim. There is the tireless cutting of David Novak. Doing a lot for this check side. Style trying to get the low release back, and that is a beautiful break throw. Novak pops it into the end zone, and that is the Czech offense that has been so crucial for them succeeding in this tournament. Yeah, and the Czechs seem to, seem to be pretty content just working it up the sideline there. Great patience and converting. I have a feeling somewhere down the line this Czech side are going to come across the Irish team again. They've had some great battles in the past. Will be a great great game to watch. Yeah, the Irish side in that windmill quarterfinal were coming in with the higher seed, the higher Swiss draw points, but that didn't matter. The Czech side, very brave, hard. They did a lot of hockey in that game, which is something they've been seeming a little uh, more conservative against this Israeli side, which I'm a little bit surprised about, but it's working for them. I think maybe the wind is um, playing a big issue there and just want to secure it by, uh, by cutbacks and maybe just keep the disc. Because they know what the Israeli can, team can do on in, in terms of athle athleticism. They had some amazing plays, defenses on some long shots so far, so maybe they chose to take another route to go with. There's a better pull from the Czechs, up to the brick mark. Lebo back on the field after calling that injury, and lashing one deep straight away. That is a beautiful hawk, and well reeled in. That's how you throw down win, folks. Itai Simo. It's an amazing shot there. Czechs cooking a little there. Didn't really know what to do. It was just great execution on on that hook. Yeah, what a way to come back onto the field. Lebo was like, I'm feeling better. I can throw this dusty little flick hook. And I think that the key thing is there, he throws it softly. It's going to land in the end zone. It's not going to fly out the back. Shout out to one of our accommodators, Stefan Rapazzo, delivering coffee to us this morning. Great man. Uh, just to me, but it looks but uh, you've missed out on that one. That's okay, I've had a coffee before. This, this would be my first coffee in Hungary, if I'm oh, to really? consume this, yeah. I couldn't live without coffee. Got my double espresso this morning. You're getting that in our accommodation, or where are you uh, sourcing it? No, no, as there's a coffee place in at our accommodation. Okay, how? What to like? How would you rate the coffee? Oh, it's um solid five out of ten. It's better coffee. Italian coffee is better, but it's maybe a bit of a high standard. But it's caffeine, it's drinkable, and it's better than the the powder we get at breakfast. So. So, 95 minutes gone on the clock, five minutes remaining in this game before the soft cap comes on. I can confirm there will be no sharing of co coffees during this game. One coffee per commentator. So checks now. We see a forced backhand from the Israelis. Haven't seen too much of that. And there we see one shot to the end zone. That's going to bobble in there and well read by Reed Low. There we see the Czech team composed again, using their big bodies to get their goals. And 
you're pretty content. Yeah, for me, it's a competition between Reedlo and Novak for who's been the star of this game for the Czech team. He's just been so consistent. He's got blocks, he's true assists, he's scored goals. Uh, Reedlo, you see him there. That one I was worried might catch the wind, but uh, ends Great. up exactly where you want in the back of the end zone. Great execution there. Yeah, Reedlo actually a powerhouse for the, the Czech mix team. 2016, remember him on that game against Canada. Czech mix team beating beating them, I think, in pool play or something. So yeah, great work. Do you remember where the Czech mix team finished? I'm, I'm guessing it was tied ninth as well, was I it? I think so. He actually got to play. I was captain of the Irish mix team then. We played Austria mixed in our last game. Oh really? Do you remember how that went? No, I didn't really play a lot of ultimate back then. I just started, so I... Uh, we won, I think, by two points. Two, two points, okay. So we got ninth, tied ninth place, as we weren't able to play out the whole bracket, and Austria got tied 16th place. Oh, well. Which actually guaranteed the Irish mixed team uh, a bid for the World Ultimate Golf Championships. Anyone who finishes top nine in the previous event are guaranteed a spot. So we didn't know at the time, but probably an important result. That was an Austria team with the likes of Wolfgang Mitterer and also Trixie. Trixie Petersdorfer, great player. I know a friend of mine, haven't seen her in quite a while. She's not, I don't think she's on social media, Facebook stuff. I always used to always communicate with WhatsApp with her, but sometimes it's nice to have social media to see your friends' faces and remember they exist. That's true. But it's then Zion and this Israeli side trying to get back into this game. The Czechs have been sitting on their comfy cushion for quite some time now. Coming back out there with the zone, look. Oh, and there's a cheeky pass straight through the middle. Amazing field awareness there. Check, check zone still. Couldn't quite connect on that defense. Especially this kind of wall-like defense. That's such a hard throw to get off, that yeah. flat backhand straight through the middle of the zone. Usually such a tight window, but just... Great execution. Yeah, Ben Zion here. You can see it's almost a little bit of an inside break. To sue it, I guess, for the goal. Not entirely sure with these retrofitted oh. jersey numbers for the Israelis. I guess some of them may be doubling up with their junior kit for having to change some of the numbers, or so I've heard. But not really matching up with what we have here in front of us. So if you know who scored that goal, let us know. I'm occasionally checking the YouTube live chat. Anything spicy going on there? Yep, yep, there is. Definitely not going to talk about it here, though. <laughs> what was the finest conversations in our great universe happening in uh, live chat windows on YouTube? That's where you'll find the best conversations in the comment section if it was opposite day. So, again, I don't think I've seen either team pull past the opposition brick mark going upwind, which surprises me a little bit. I know it's windy, but maybe not that windy. That disc is possibly going to sail too far. Can he? Oh, great grab. Running out of space in the back of the end zone. Marek Dostal, a difficult man to overthrow. As we see him there, great footwork to keep it in bounds. Yeah, another two-shot goal there. As we hear the time's over. Yeah, coming just after that goal, so we'll be finished this point and add one to the highest score. Great shot there. By Fent.
and it's trying to get some updates on mixed pool A, where it's all going down. I think it's likely Germany going to finish top of that group. Denmark finished third, Russia second. Surprisingly, the game is now over. Germany winning 15-6. Yeah, so as as I predicted happened, Germany on top, uh, Russia finishing second, and Denmark finishing third after beating the exceptional Russian side. By five points yesterday. Yeah. I think I saw them was like, okay, maybe the Danes going to lose, but they had such a, a good goal difference going into that game, so that's it. Had to lose by six or more, which they did. Fortunate for them. Good for the Germans, though. But uh, if Israel can bang this one in, it will be game 14. But great defensive pressure from the Czechs. Foul being called. This one's going to be a spicy one. It looks like it's uncontested. Almost got around there. Dubiek. A great awareness. Disc will stay with Lebo. Looking towards the end zone. Gets a nice up the line shot. Oh, the continuation was there, but holsters this one. Again, getting that reach set in the small spaces. Definitely wouldn't want to be claustrophobic playing for this Israeli team because they move and swivel around. That is a great catch. Low off the ground. If, would this have been a grass field? I'd say that would have been down, but just millimeters off the ground keeps this dream alive for the Israeli side the score now 13 11 so and game to 14 yeah we can see Katsir there doing a lot of work in the end zone for this Israeli side Czech opting to go with another zone look there just couldn't keep couldn't quite contain the, the Israeli side matching up man to man after that uncontested foul there, and you can see that inside shot again. So, so game point for the check. Yeah, going downwind on offense. This is going to be tricky for the Israelis, but if they can break here upwind, then you feel like they have a really good chance of getting this downwind again. So. If I was the Czechs, I'd be putting out your best seven now. Let's end the game here and now. We're going down with an offense. I think that's exactly what they did. There's Novak out there. And Reload. Having done some great work for this with this Czech O line so far. Yeah. If I was the Czechs, I'd be a little bit tempted to boost it to Dostal. All I know is the Davide play when it comes to crunch time. Get your best roar, get your best receiver, make it happen. Let's see what they will do. Bring it up to the brick mark here. Here's Dostal with the disc. Oh, and that is a hand block. And Israelis waste no time sending it this one. Sent up into the sky. Oh, that's probably going to be too high for Lebo. Oh, Dostal, and Dostal. Making up for it again with a. Great read there on that defense. Just yeah, that's one thing. He's knocking it, beating that too easily. And now they shoot and win the game. The Czech Republic taking it 14-11. Good effort from Israel. Almost got that open break to keep it alive. Lebo unable to compete with the mighty Dostal in the air. Czechs with a big victory here. As we said before, this is essentially a qualifier for them as well for the World Ultimate Gus Championships. So, big, big moment for them. Hard fought battle from Israel. They've done their nation proud. Any final thoughts on this game, Christina? Yeah, I was really impressed by Israel's strength and they never got, gave up. Got a couple of breaks, but then in the end, wind was just on Czech side, I guess. Um, so, yeah, it was a great game to watch. Really excited seeing how they will do in, in the power pool and see what 
still put up the field, full on field later on in this in this tournament, and I think the Czech Republic can be a force one can reckon with in later stages as well. Yeah, we will leave it there, folks. Congratulations to the Czech Republic. We'll be back in a few minutes' time in the men's division. Ireland taking on Denmark. Stay tuned for that. Thanks very much for watching. Big shout out again to our Ulti.tv crew for doing a fantastic job here in the hot, hot Hungary. And uh, we will leave it there. See you lads later. See you. TV.